Can you imagine getting married and your honeymoon being consummated by another man in your place? Or on the long dreamed of day, not being able to be alone with your loved one until the feudal lord allows? Don't go away and I'll tell you the story that happened in the Middle Ages. So leave your super like, subscribe, and let's go to the video. Rite of the First Knight, also known as Rite of the Lord or Rite of the Leg, refers to a supposed institution that would have been enforced in the Middle Ages and that allowed the feudal lord, within the scope of his domain, to have the first relationship with the bride on her wedding night. It seems crazy when we imagine a situation like that, but in Europe there was, however, in certain places, feudal law in addition to giving the right to the first relationship with the bride, also forced the groom to pay some coins to his lord when the bride came from another manor, which made some authors of the 18th and 19th centuries think that some rite of the first night may have existed. No way. The legend grew out of a misunderstanding. In many manners, lords authorized the marriage of servants with a symbolic gesture placing their hand or leg on the bride and groom's bed, the so-called right of the leg. Mentions of this tradition have been misinterpreted by historians, who think they have found evidence of the intimate exploitation of peasant women. Mm. It is a striking example of certain interpretations based solely on wordplay, wrote historian Hegine Pernot. Exactly. In the presentation of the musical theatrical play, The First Fruits, the Brazilian playwright Diaz Gomes said that in some countries, such as France, this institution lasted until the revolution of 1789, and that in Sicily, in Italy, it survived until the middle of the 19th century. In colonial Brazil, the abuses typical of slavery suggest that a similar right could have existed for the benefit of plantation owners and large landowners, a bit in a unofficial way. <laughs> Too bad. In fact, in most cases, the master didn't wait for the wedding. It was abuse, not a right. Holy moly! Despite scant evidence, the right of the first night is a powerful and enduring story. Even in Hollywood movies, like Braveheart, in plays, and even series have already addressed this subject. The sexual content of the rite of the first night makes it stick in our memory, says French historian Elie Bouchou, who has devoted an entire book to debunking this myth. It is a story that fascinates for its total otherness, for feeding the fantasy of an institutional and even legal consent to violence. Oh, really? Because of its enormous power to provoke indignation the right of the leg is a great tool for anyone who wants to show how detestable and barbaric a people or their leader was. So much so that it was used long before the Middle Ages. This was the case in the Epic of Gilgamesh, one of the first literary works in the history of the world, written in Mesopotamia 4,000 years ago. Gilgamesh is described as an oppressive king who would not spare a virgin. In the 5th century BC, the Greek Herodotus, the father of history, said that in the tribe of the Adirmachidae, in Libya, all brides were sent to the king, who chose those with whom he would like to spend the night. Seriously? Even medieval Christians, now victims of the legend, reproduced it. It was said that the custom was practiced by barbaric peoples beyond Christian borders. The fact that they refer to the right to the first night as something humiliating is another indication that they did not consider it normal or routine, much less consented to such a custom. Despite this, during the Enlightenment, 
the philosopher Voltaire, interested in portraying the Middle Ages as an age of darkness and oppression, wrote a play about the supposed medieval custom. So guys, what do you think of this crazy story? Did it really happen or not? Leave your opinions here in the comments. And don't forget to leave your super like and share with your friends. Best wishes and see you in the next video. Bye.